All right, just got the kids down for bed, so I'm going to go ahead and finish out these notes. All right, <clears throat> so now we have a division problem that has X in it. And the good news is yesterday's division problems went pretty well, as long as you remember to put the square root around it after you divided, that this hopefully will flow pretty well for you. Okay, got myself all situated. So um, let's say that this is multiple choice in the keystone, so here they are. Which value of x um, will fit this expression so that that expression equals a whole number? So it's the easiest way to do this is to simply put those numbers in and see which one. Now remember, if we want the whole thing to equal a whole number, that means we need to be able to get a perfect square inside of our square root when we reduce, okay? So let's put one in there for x. So let's say I have the square root of 180 divided by the square root of one. Well, when I divide those, I get the square root of 180, which is not on my list, right? So it's not a perfect square, so it cannot be option A. Let's look at option B. So let's do 180 divided by the, the square root of 180 divided by the square root of two. Well, that's gonna give us the square root of 90, right? Well, that's also not on my list. That's not a perfect square. So we're gonna to move to option C now. Remember, whatever I get right here, like this 90, would have to be on my list that we developed um, quite a few times already. So let's try the three now. So it's the square root of 180 divided by the square root of three. Now when you divide 180 by three, you get 60, right? So that is also not a perfect square. And if it's not a perfect square, take a look, guys. I think you know. We're not gonna get a perfect whole number, right, when we square root it. So now let's finish with the square root of 180 divided by the square root of four. Well, what's 180 divided by four? All right, equal to a whole number. So now we're gonna to move to option D. Now what you might have noticed is the video cutting in and out. Um, that's because I didn't have a correct answer. So we're gonna to have to make option D our answer and I'll show you why. Um, so the four that I had there originally is no good. So let's show why five is gonna be able to work. So if we do 180, square root of 180 and we divide by the square root of five, and when we reduce that, it ends up just being the square root of 36 which is indeed a perfect square, which if we take the square root of it, we end up getting a whole number of six. So that shows you that option D, x equals five, is our answer. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna do that with 270, and we're gonna show each step, okay? So let's go to option A. So we would have the square root of 270 divided by the square root of three. There's the dog. And that's the square root of 90 when I divide. Look at my calculator. That's not a perfect square. So the square root of 90 would not be a perfect whole number. Let's try option B. Square root of 270 divided by the square root of 6 would end up being the square root of 45. Again, that's not a perfect square. So it's not gonna be a whole number. And I'll prove that here by doing the square root of 45. Let's try nine. So we're gonna do the square root of 270 divided by the square root of nine. Oops. Oh dear. Clear that out. Try again, sorry. So the square root of 270 divided by nine is the square root of 30. That is also not a perfect square. So it cannot be a whole number if you take the square root. Okay. I'm just trying this one because I feel like I messed it up. 
Boy, oh boy, did I ever. Okay, my bad. Again, I must have been rushing when I made my notes, so please pretend that option D and your options should have that on as a 30. Um, so to prove that option D is the correct answer, we would do the square root of 270 divided by the square root of 30, and we would get the square root of 9, which is indeed a perfect square for the final answer to be 3. So x would have to be 30, so that when we divide, we get a perfect square. And since we're taking the square root of a perfect square, we get a whole number. So x would have to be 30. All right, we're going to do this one more time. And we're going to try a, b, c, and d. So if a is the option, I would do square root of 40 over square root of 1, replacing the x which is the square root of 40, which is not a perfect whole number. See how if you do square root of 40, not a perfect whole number. Now let's do the square root of 40 and divide it by the square root of 4. So 40 divided by 4 is a 10. And the square root of 10, again, is not a perfect square and therefore not a whole number. Option C, square root of 40 divided by the square root of 10. Again, we're replacing x. You divide there and you get 4. See how 40 divided by 10 is 4? That is a perfect square whose answer is 2. So of my multiple choice options, it would have to be option C. I will prove that this is not the case here because the square root of or 40 divided by 25 in and of itself is as a decimal, which is not some, and, and while you do get the square root of 1.6, which believe it or not, is actually also not perfect. So the only option that gave us a perfect answer at the end was option C. All right, got a few more to try. For what value of x is this, <laughs> equal to this. By the way, to make these problems up was not enjoyable. All right, so we're gonna show work to see which one of those x's, if I put it in for 28, will end up giving me seven square roots of two. So we're gonna start with option one. So I'm gonna have the square root of 28. It was times x, right? So it's gonna be times two all over square root of two. Okay, so 28 times 2 is 56 over the square root of 2. All right, now let's do this. 56 divided by 2 is 28. So that equals the square root of 28. So just so you know, the first thing we did is I multiplied to get 56. Then I divided to get 28. Then I would go to my list. I do have a list here. We can always pull my list. And developed a new one, I swear, like 12 different times, hi guys. And I would work my way through the list and I would see what number would work. So I would start maybe at 16. 28 divided by 16, 28 divided by 9, 28 divided by 4, and voila, I get 4 and 7. So this actually takes... Um, you can see how this is what we were doing before. So you multiply, you divide, you reduce, and that gives me two square roots of seven, which is not what I wanted. I want seven square roots of two. All right, let's try this one. So I'll do square root of 28 times x over square root of two. All right, so 28 times so just like I did before, 28 times 7 is the square root of 196. So I multiplied. This is still over the square root of 2. And what's 196 divided by 2? Is there any way you can turn that music down a little bit, please? Okay, so, um, so the first thing I did is multiplied. Now I divided. 
to get the square root of 98. And then I need to look at my list. And I would start around 49. So here's 49. And 98 divided by 49, boom, that'll do it. So I get the square root of 49 times the square root of 2, which, if you think, yay, that is 7 square roots of 2. Shrink that down. Thank you. All right. So in other words, I found the correct answer by plugging it in for x, multiplying, dividing, and using my list. Now I'm gonna show you that c is not the correct answer. So it'd be the square root of 28 times 14 over the square root of two. 28 times 14 is 392. And that would be over the square root of two. So 392 divided by 2 is 196. And while 196 is a beautiful answer because it's a perfect square, I wasn't looking for a perfect square this time, was I? Because the square root of 196 is a perfect 14. But the directions didn't say I wanted the one that gives me a whole number. The direction says I want the ones that gave me 7 square root of 2. Last one is 28. So if I do the square root of 28 times 28, and I divide it by the square root of two. That's the square root of 784 divided by the square root of two. And 784 divided by two, so that was multiply. Now I divide, is the square root of 392. If I go to my list, <clears throat> what's half of 392? Okay. When I went to my list, I would go to 196, which is in the middle. And I would do, that becomes the square root of 196 times two, which is 14 square roots of two. So while that seems very doable, remember I wanted the answer to be seven square roots of two. So the only thing that worked out was using seven as my X value. We're gonna do that again just to walk through the process. So I need this crazy fraction to become this reduced radical, or square root. So I'll do the square root of 36 times my x value and option, oops, that should say option A, I apologize, of five, square root of three. Now we're gonna follow the same steps. So we're gonna multiply the numerator, 36 and five, and that is, and we're, we'll just shrink this down. That equals the square root of 180 divided by the square root of 3. And 180 divided by 3, that's going to give me the square root of 60. And if I use my list for the square root of 60, um, I would start at 49. So 60 divided by 49, 60 divided by 36, 60 divided by 25, 60 divided by 16, and 60 divided by 9, 60 divided by 4. So that would be 4 square roots of 50, or excuse me, that would be the square root of 4 times the square root of 15, which is 2 root of 15, which is not what we wanted. So I'm going to shrink all of that down. And all of that was just for option A. I'm going to repeat that for option B. So square root of 36 times my x value of 2 over the square root of 3. 36 times 2 becomes the square root of 72 over the square root of 3. 72 divided by 3 is 24. And if I use my list for 24, where's my list at? There it is. I would start at 16. 24 divided by 16, 24 divided by nine, 24 divided by four. And I would get four and six for that, just like we have been doing. This takes us back to the first day we learned, which is two square roots of six, which, ah, bummer, is again, not what we're looking for. 
So I'm gonna shrink this down. Option B is not my answer. <coughs> Option C. So we have the original square root of 36, replace the x this time with three. So that's 36 times three, very patiently following the steps. People will make mistakes when they rush the steps. 108 divided by three is 60. And I've already, ooh, conveniently, didn't I just do 60 somewhere? I swear I just did 60, there it is over there. Um, all right, something's not right. Oh, one, look, I typed it in my calculator wrong, silly me. 108 divided by three, I apologize, is 36, not 60, silly me, which ends up actually being a perfect six. Now, if they were asking me which one would make it a whole number, that would be my option. So option D must be it. I'll shrink this down. Option D has to be it. So it was the square root of 36 times x over the square root of 3. That was the original. So that's going to be 36 times 4, which is the square root of 144, divided by the square root of 3. Let's divide now, like I've been doing. Okay, so I did multiply, and now I'm doing divide. And that equals the square root of 48. And now when I go to my list, I would see, okay, now what goes into 48? I need a double square root. 48, I would probably go to like 25 maybe if I wasn't sure what they were. It ends up being 16 and 3. Look at my calculator, which is 4 squared to 3, which is finally what they were looking for. So option D is the correct option. If X is 4, then I end up with 4 squared to 3. We have one more to do, okay? Simplify and rewrite this crazy fraction in the form a squared to b, where a and b are integers or whole numbers, I think, and whole numbers, and a is bigger than one. Okay, guys, we totally have this. So the first thing we're gonna do is multiply and multiply. We can totally do that. 48 times 125 is the square root of 6,000. Don't let that square root throw you off. That's totally fine. 250 times 2 is the square root of 125. So we multiplied and multiplied, and now it's time to divide. 6,000 divided by 125 is the square root of 48. The square root of 48, I would need to use my list, and I would get two square roots from it. 48 divided by 36 48 divided by 25, 48 divided by 16 is 16 with a square root of 3, which ends up being 4 square roots of 3. So we simplified it and we rewrote it in terms of a square roots of b, where a is a whole number of 4 and b is a whole number of 3. So as long as you trust the process and you work them through, you're going to be perfectly fine. Look at what it's looking for. If it's looking for a whole number, that means you better make sure that you're getting a perfect square for whatever value of x you're getting. Okay? And that is the end.